Sunday morning. But I want you all to do a lot of amen in though. There you go. That's what I like to hear. All right. How many of you all know that God is in control? I'm going to give you a few uh, real-time examples of God being in control. Yes, and uh, like our dear uh, sister Catherine said, we need to continue to pray for Jerusalem, Israel, uh, you know, and everybody, or uh, Israel over there. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but uh, last Wednesday night, uh, for those of you who were, uh, who were there, uh, Pastor Chip uh, said there was a headline in the uh, Israeli newspaper that uh, a terrorist was saying that their God was changing the tra uh, trajectory or the route of, uh, of our missiles. You know, and, and that got me. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, you, all, you know, that's a terrorist saying that. They're God, so they know. They, they, they know very much so. So I, I was very intrigued by that. So I went to the Israeli uh, newspaper, and I was like, well, what else was there? And uh, this, is, this is phenomenal. You guys have got to hear this. A direct hit on an uh, ammunition pile. In the late hours of the night, an IDF truck loaded with arms and shells parked next to a uh, Jerusalem building. Its mission was to bring a fresh supply of ammunition to the front line outposts. The element of danger was great in that where the truck was to be, uh, if the truck were to be hit by enemy fire, the subsequent explosions of all the ammo would bring down all the buildings in the area on their inhabitants. Suddenly, the, suddenly, there was a whistling of an approaching enemy shell was heard, and the shell indeed scored a direct hit on the vehicle. But the Arab shell did not explode. It remained perched atop of the pile of Israel, Israeli shells in the truck. Now is our God in control? Come on. Yep. Here's a German viewpoint. A German journalist summed up summarized nothing like this has ever happened in history <laughs> you need to read the bible a force including a thousand tanks hundreds of artillery cannons many rockets and fighter jets and a hundred thousand soldiers armed from outposts and installations and this victory was carried out by a force that lost many soldiers and much equipment positions and vehicle no military logic or nature natural cause can explain this monumental occurrence that was the Palestinians and the, and the Israelis took it to them, over a thousand tanks. I mean, think about that. Amen. Here's one. It's interesting, though. If you look on the Israeli newspaper, they, they don't spell God out. G-D. Because they feel that's irreverent, and, 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 you know, that's fine. But it was very interesting to me. But here's one, the finger of God. IDF Director of Operations Major General Ezra Wiseman was asked by Mr. Levinon, the father of a fallen uh, pilot, how he explained the fact that for three straight hours, Israel Air Force planes flew from one Egyptian airstrip to another, destroying the enemy planes, yet the Egyptians did not radio ahead to inform their own forces of the oncoming Israeli attack. You know, think about that. We got radios, we got cell phones, we got everything else yet. Nothing. So God is in control. This is the last one. This is one I like. This is one that's really cool. Uh, and I'll kind of summarize this up. Uh, 18 Egyptians against two IDF soldiers. Uh, you figure that's not going to go well. But the half, uh, the half track came to a halt, and we decided to cautiously approach it. The half track was the Palestinians. We found 18 armed soldiers inside sitting with guns in hand with a petrified look on their faces. They looked at us with great fear as though, as though begging for mercy. I shouted, hands up. And as we marched them uh, and I returned to a state of calm, I asked the Egyptian sergeant next to me, tell me, why didn't you shoot at us? He answered, I don't know. My arms froze. They became paralyzed. My whole body was paralyzed, and I don't know why. <laughs> it turned out that these soldiers didn't know that the Straits of uh, Tehran were already in uh, Israeli hands. Why didn't they limit us? Why didn't they eliminate us? I don't have an answer. How can one say that God didn't help us? I mean, think about that. So, without a fact, God is in control. He's in control when it comes down to us, when it comes down to Israel, when it comes down to Christians, and uh, when it comes down to the world. I mean, nothing goes on here that he isn't uh, either uh, allowed. 
something or uh, he's in control. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. But before I begin my uh, sermon, and that was a, I thought that was a pretty good start. But before, <laughs> let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that the uh, teacher come, the preacher come. I ask that the Holy Spirit be here to lead and guide and, uh, and to direct me and, uh, and to direct uh, um, your words. Heavenly Father, for it is not I, but Christ in me. It is, not, uh, it is not I, but the Holy Spirit who speaks through me. And I just pray that, that you open the hearts and the ears and the eyes of, uh, of, your, uh, of your people. And I pray that the Holy Spirit walk among us and be here with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, please turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 15. You know, I, I, I could have, uh, and the, and the uh, title of my message this morning is God, Our Protector, is in Control. Uh, throughout the Bible, there are, there are, there are many, and I mean many, uh, examples of this, uh, of God being in control. But he, uh, we, we must allow him to be in control of our lives, um, as it is a choice to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It is, uh, you know, we must yield to the Holy Spirit. We must yield to God. Let me go ahead and uh, read this. I gotta find it. <laughs> uh, I'm reading out of the uh, NIV Bible, so it may sound a little different for those of you who have the King James Version. Huh? Yeah, it's just the words a little different, but they they mean the same thing. <laughs> Uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. I can get amen when you're all found it. Amen. All right, there we go. That's what I like to hear. All right, and we'll go. Uh, hmm. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. And this is uh, Elisha. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And, uh, and Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. We have a mighty God. And what I wanted to bring out and what I wanted to, what I wanted to preach about or, or teach about, it depends on how things go, is... is uh, no matter how hard, no matter how, no matter how great the forces are against us, no matter how many troubles and how many, uh, how many different uh, issues come up in our lives, that we need, to, uh, we need to know that God is in control. Amen. And then, and then, you know, it's it, it amazes me that uh, that he had to pray to have God open his servant's eyes. The man of God already knew, and that's where faith comes in. And when the servant saw, his heart was filled with faith and belief as well. You just imagine. I could go through. I could go through many in the Bible of different things. But we uh, we are grafted into the vine, which is Christ, and we are in Him. And as we see in Second Kings, God has provided protection for His servant, and we are also God's servants, holy and set aside, sanctified for the work. And. Uh, when we see the troubles of this world welling up around us, who are we going to turn to? You know, who are we going to turn to? Are we going to turn to, uh, or turn to our friend and say, oh my, how terrible is this? Hey, misery loves company. <laughs> you know, uh, for the many things that, uh, that uh, if we look at David's life, you know, he, he did quite a few things. Uh, some of it not altogether the, uh, the best, but who did he run to? He didn't run to a priest. He didn't run to a pastor. He didn't run to uh, to his buddy. He ran to God, and that was accounted to him as righteousness. So it's kind of the points I want to bring out with are are where's our focus? Is our focus on Christ, or is our focus on the on the forest and the trees? You know, and and what the troubles are that we have around us, as we see here. You know, Elisha didn't have his focus on the army. He was like, well, my focus is on God. God will take care of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just practical sense to, uh, to Elisha. And the servant was like, 
Uh, I see the forest. I see this big, massive amount of army around this city until his eyes was open. And then it was like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're, we're fine. <laughs> and, and so we, we have to approach uh, um, life in this fashion, that we have to rely on Christ and rely on God, who is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. I mean, there's so many different, uh, I've got 11 pages of the, of the uh, names of God that if I run out of time, if I don't run out of time, and if I have some extra, I may read those. No, I won't read those. <laughs> but but it's, it, it amazes me that, uh, that God uh, is, is uh, so prevalent in our lives, and uh, he sees and he takes care of uh, all of our needs. Uh, we must run to God, not our friends, neighbors, or even our pastor. God is in control, and when he takes care of you, look, uh, we, you know, we look at the New Testament, look at Peter. You know, in, uh, in Acts chapter 5, 18 through 20, you know, Peter stands up before the Sanhedrin or the uh, Pharisees, and, he, get, and he, he, he preaches it out boldly for the Holy Spirit to uh, em, embolden him and empowered him to do so. And, and they were like, well, uh, let's, let's throw him in prison. You know, and the next day maybe we'll just execute him uh, because that was, really wasn't cool. It really wasn't neat what he did in front of us. So, uh, But that night God said, I'm in control. I opened up the prison gates, and he walked right out. But it it and it was it was it was the uh, prayers of the saints of God praying for Peter for his release. But what amazed me was when Peter was released and he knocked on the door. You know, and and, and somebody came out uh, and and somebody came out there and oh, it's Peter and they come running back and everybody's like, shh, we're still praying for Peter's release. Well, they had they needed their eyes opened up. <laughs> Amen. Because when that happened, uh, well, yeah, when they finally found out that yeah, Peter was released, uh, even when uh, even when it's uh, when we believe that it's not uh, it's not God's time; it's in our time. We'll just uh, we'll just keep going, and uh, you know, we sit there and say, well, you know, that's enough prayer. I think we're fine. No, I keep praying. Keep, keep focusing on God and keep going through. I'm glad I got this water because my I'm getting cotton mouth. <laughs> so, in all this, we wanna we wanna understand that uh, that a first point God is in control. He takes care of everything. Takes care of us, our finances. If we have finance, you know, if if we get those where finances are surmounting up or uh, or job, we lose a job or we're trying to find a job you know understand god is in control and when that happens and when it's his time when it's his place or when you when when he wants it to ha it will happen yeah. you know i prayed i prayed and you guys know that i prayed and uh, and you have all prayed from uh, from my wife i i don't want to embarrass her but uh you know we prayed greatly and uh it was in god's time That's right. wasn't in my time nope. wasn't in your time but the faithful continue to pray and we keep praying. That's right. Amen. So, so we know God is in control, and we must. All, we also know that. Uh, second point is focus. We must have our focus on the right on the right object of our uh, faith. For for it is faith in God. Our focus needs to be on Christ and Him crucified, and what He did at the cross. And if we continue to have that, it's just like Peter when he walked out of the boat. You know, you know, Master. You know, let me come to you and get out of the boat. Starts to walk on the water. When he takes his eyes off of Christ, and he looks at the trouble around him, what does he start to do? You know, he starts to sink. Yeah, exactly. But when your focus is on Christ, you don't see the stuff around you. You don't see. You don't see uh, uh, people saying, "Well, you're just, you know, you're just a crazy Christian." And you know, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to anything. You don't see things like that. You just keep your eyes on Christ, and by our uh, and by our lives and by our living, people will see and know it's real. It's real. You know, it's uh, it's. Uh, I, I think I think a lot of times we get wrapped up a lot in uh, in what we have and or don't have. There's a lot of things we don't have. Well, we got Jesus. That's all right. Yeah, I know where my treasure. I know where my treasures are at. You know, amen. 
Amen to that. Uh, for he is our healer and uh, provider, comforter. Keep your eyes on Jesus. What problems will seem so small? It's, it, it's, it amazes me. But, um, but not only that. Um, you know, I, uh, I wanted to uh, definitely uh, let everybody know that uh, when you leave out of here, I want you to know something. You know, I, I want you to have that in your heart and to know something uh, when you leave out of church. But we don't have a problem. We really don't. Our problems, we don't have problems. We have solutions. We have a solution, and that's, and that's God. That is God. Let's see, what else did I have marked? And uh, how many of you like to be in God's army? All those fiery steeds and fiery chariots. <laughs> I mean, you know, what a wonderful procession that is. I'm not going to read all those names. <laughs> I have another piece of paper here. <laughs> God, uh, uh, God uh, laid that on my heart this morning, just that, uh, you know, so, we have people need it. People need to know that God is in control. God is the mighty God. God is the God of uh, Israel. Uh, God brought Israel out of Egypt. He parted the Red Sea, but he didn't bring him out of, e uh, out of Egypt uh, lame, hurt. He brought him out whole. He brought him out with the entire spoils of Egypt and left the Egypt desti destitute of anything. But uh, as in that, uh, we are in the army of Christ. We are in the army of God. And I wanted to touch on a little bit that while God is in control, and he definitely is control, is in control, he's given us tools uh, in this life, and we know. And we have the full armor of God. And uh, I wanted to go over that. So uh, if, if you wanted to turn to uh, Ephesians 6, what's going on over there? We are going to uh, we're going to delve a little bit in this other uh, other sermon that I had, for I have a little bit of time, which I think is uh, is a good thing. And it says the uh, Ephesians chapter six verse 15, uh, verse uh, ten. I'll start at verse ten. Yeah. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. How to be strong, put on the full armor of God. Has anybody ever been to a church where somebody stands up and says, let's put on the full armor of God? Yep. Has it, really? Well, when did you take that off? Yep. Let me, you know, if you kind of put it on, when did you take it off? I mean, yeah, don't take it off. The, the full armor of God is, is Christ. And, and, and we'll go through that a little bit. And it said, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. If you don't have the armor of God on you, you're not going to be able to uh, stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, that so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the best breast, or excuse me, with the breast plate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and pray in the spirit on all occasions it is just the same as uh, as, as john the beloved in revelations chapter 1 verse uh, verse 1 i was in the spirit on the lord's day amen in all kinds, and it says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert always, keeping the praying for the saints. The belt of truth. Who is Christ? Because John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Christ said. So if we look at everything here within the whole armor of God, it is Christ. The breastplate of righteousness. Who is Christ? First, First Corinthians one thirty. I will. I will go there. 
I had to read these out. And it states, It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So the blessed bit of righteousness points to Christ. And if we look, Jehovah Sidkenu, in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 23, 6, the Lord our righteousness. So, taking the full armor of God, if you, uh, Christ is in us as we are in Christ. Now, this is a paradox here. If you look at the, uh, in your feet, shod with the pre uh, preparedness of the gospel of peace, well, for the full armor of God, we're at war, but your feet are shod with peace. So that's kind of a paradox where peace and war go hand in hand for the Christian. Now for the shield of faith. God is our shield. Psalms 84, 9. Behold, O God, our shield. Our faith must be in Christ and Him crucified. And it, uh, David many times alludes to uh, God who is our shield, our buckler, our hiding place. The helmet of salvation, point number five. Luke 1, 69. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, who is Christ. Jesus is our salvation. Number six, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Who is the Word of God? Jesus. Who was, was, who, uh, who was with God? We all know that one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, so in all things, when we look on it, when somebody says, you know, when we look at uh, what Paul wrote when he said, put on the full armor of God, he was not, uh, he was not meaning just individual pieces uh, for who's going to run around with just a belt of truth. You know, without anything else, that's not really going to save you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, and, and we're, you know, yeah, who's going to put on the uh, breastplate of righteousness only, you know, not the helmet of salvation or anything else? I mean, it, to say we must have all of which is Christ. We must have, uh, we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so to be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ is to have uh, the full armor of God on. Because how else are the, uh, are the flaming darts going to be extinguished? And nothing can get through the blood. It's only when you open it up and peek through that and go, oh, wow. You know, there, there you go. Uh, you know, you've allowed the situation. So uh, in conclusion, we see that the full armor of God is active, active, forward-moving, and not retreating. Because it says, you know, when you've done all to stand... It didn't say when you've done all, like, you know, run, flee. It says when you've done all to stand. Amen. I mean, it's, um, it's very simple. There's no retreat. There's no retreat when it comes down to God. His fir the first few letters in his name are go. You know, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I can't. Come on now. <laughs> so, so in all things... In all things, always have the full armor of God on. And understand and know that with the full armor of God that we have on, we, uh, that he is in control of our lives and what happens and how everything goes. He is our healer. He is our salvation, our righteousness. And he is our sword. With all of that, I don't think that we can be, uh, there's no way we can be conquered. We cannot be overcome if we have Christ and Christ in us. Amen. Now, I want to, in, in closing, uh, this was kind of an interesting, it was just kind of an interesting sermon for me because one didn't last as long as it needed to, so I did two, the other one. So you have two this morning. But I think they worked hand in hand because God is our protector and, you know, to have the full armor of God on, you are completely protected. There shouldn't be anything that gets in there, but... Uh, uh, we know that uh, in life, life does happen, and our focus does actually, um, sometimes we do actually see a lot of what's going on in our lives and what's happening. And, uh, and uh, if, uh, uh, 
we do get troubled by the turmoil that we have in life. I mean, it happens. We're, uh, I, I, I don't like to use the adage, we're human, but, you know, the, the, that's apparent. Scientists have told us, and uh, God has told us that uh, we are. <laughs> so we have those things come up. And those things do happen, and things in our lives, and whether they be relatively close, uh, like uh, lo- losing a loved one, or, um, or you know, um, Cancer, things of that nature, losing a job, losing a house, losing, uh, you know, just uh, just things of that nature. We need to maintain our focus on Christ. Yes. We just need to, uh, to to give him praise because he's blessed us. God has blessed us with so much. Yes. He has blessed us with our uh, with our with our health, with our life, with our uh, with our friends, with our church, yes. with our. Uh, you know, just anything and everything that you have. Yes, uh, singer, musicians, please come back. So, this morning, uh, I wanted to, if, if we could have everybody stand. I'm getting at the closing. I'm in, uh, in closing. Uh, in closing, for those of you who the enemy has tried to raise up issues and problems to the point where you feel overwhelmed, uh, 